What's up everybody? We're going to be talking about BPOs and everything about them. What's happening? Steve with Steve Invest helping real estate agents, brokers, and real estate investors grow their businesses with a path toward financial freedom. So what exactly is a BPO? A BPO stands for Broker's Price Opinion. Basically, it's an evaluation of a piece of real estate performed by a licensed real estate agent or broker. So how is a BPO created? Essentially, it's using three good active comparables as well as three good sold comparables after reviewing and inspecting the subject property to come up with fair market value for the property. So who uses broker price opinions? In most cases, it's going to be lending institutions. When a borrower goes into default, the banks want to immediately try to get an understanding of what the property is worth in case they do need to do a foreclosure or a short sale or even a deed in lieu of foreclosure. If a borrower goes into default and the property is upside down, meaning the borrower owes more than what the property is worth, that could lead into a foreclosure or even a short sale. You can check out that video. So how is a BPO used in real estate for short sales? In most cases, a lender is gonna hire a real estate agent or a real estate broker to do the BPO, and usually that happens once an offer is submitted to the bank with the full short sale package. However, in some instances, some of these lending institutions are very proactive and they'll actually order a BPO even before the short sale offer is even presented. This will essentially give the listing agent a good starting point to go to active market when they list that short sale property for sale. If the bank ordered a preliminary BPO, that short sale negotiator will usually provide that broker price opinion to the listing agent. In many cases, the lender is going to go ahead and encourage that listing agent to go to open market at that BPO price. So how much does a BPO cost? It's a great question. BPOs are traditionally a lot less expensive than the traditional appraisal. In many cases, they're about 10% of the cost than that of an appraisal. In my experience, BPOs have ranged anywhere between $40 and $125. And sometimes even a lot more if it's unique or even commercial real estate. All things considered, they're still a lot less expensive than doing the traditional appraisal, which is why if you're ever interested in doing BPOs for banks, lending institutions, they want real estate agents to do these for them because at the end of the day, they're gonna save the bank a lot of money. So if you are gonna do broker price opinion assignments, the fees that are paid out are going to be paid directly to your broker. They cannot pay you as an agent. So think of it just like as a commission basis. Do let your real estate broker know that you are planning on doing broker price opinions and signing up with uh, BPO assignment companies uh, just so that they're aware. And you might even be able to um, negotiate some sort of different kind of commission split uh, between you and your broker. So BPO versus appraisal. Broker price opinions, as mentioned, they're performed by licensed real estate agents or brokers. An appraisal is um, performed by a licensed certified appraiser. You cannot call a BPO an appraisal. You cannot call a comparative market analysis an appraisal. So be sure that you are distinguishing when you're speaking to clients and so forth that your valuation is not an appraisal. An appraiser's responsibility is valuing that piece of real estate, usually using three methods. And one of the three or even all three are gonna be required to be performed by an appraiser depending on the lender and borrower and property type. Appraisals are usually required uh, for a borrower for a new loan to purchase a piece of real estate and or a refinance. The three methods are as follows. The first one and the most common is the sales comparison me method where they're gonna usually utilize three good active comps, three sold comps, and come up with a, an idea of value uh, comparable to what a BPO is as well as a CMA, a comparative market analysis. The second approach is the cost approach and this is essentially valuing the raw land plus what it will cost to replace the building on there, less depreciation. And the third approach is commonly used in commercial real estate and it's the income approach and they're basically just going to come up with a valuation based on uh, essentially the property itself and income and expenses and net profit. BPO versus CMA, broker's price opinion versus comparative market analysis. 
They're pretty comparable. The BPO is essentially for lending institutions, as we mentioned. The CMA is what you do, uh, what you perform for sellers, and in some cases, buyers as well, to get an idea of valuation before you go to market for that seller and or for that buyer before they make an offer on the property and ensure that they're not overpaying retail value. And again, in both of these analysis, you're utilizing at least three active and three sold comparables. So what is the process of actually doing a broker price opinion? Once a real estate agent accepts an assignment uh, for a BPO, and remember a lot of times these assignments are sent out by email and it's, it's kind of a, um, a first come first serve basis. So if you are gonna take this serious when you get those assignments, whether it's on a, uh, a website or a text or even an app, you wanna make sure that you uh, grab those assignments as quickly as possible. All right, once the assignment is accepted, you're gonna go ahead and do a site visit. Now, pay close attention where you're doing the site visit because the last thing you wanna do is spend the time and gas money going back out to the property if you missed anything. In many cases, they're gonna have very strict guidelines specifically for uh, the actual photos and pictures. So for example, um, in many cases, in my experience, they're gonna want um, a handful of exterior pictures, handful of interior pictures, um, they're even going to want exterior pictures showing the address of the property and many times showing the street going uh, each way. Uh, so just be sure that you follow the instructions and directions very closely because again, you don't want to spend the time going back out to the property. Um, also, you're going to have to report back of the condition of the property if there's any repair, necessary repairs or the overall condition or damage of the property. And keep in mind, if you're doing BPOs for short sales um, and the short sale is listed, you're just going to have to reach out to the listing agent and make arrangements with that listing agent to gain access to the property. Other times, um, it could be in a pre-foreclosure format and, and not short sale related. This is called an exterior only BPO where you're going to have to essentially drive by the property, get pictures from the exterior, and sometimes report if you know that it's vacant or occupied. Once you've done this, you're going to go ahead and submit everything on their website. Um, usually this is where it takes most of your time because you're going to have to submit all the appropriate comparables. As we mentioned, um, in many cases, it's three active, three sold comparables. You're going to have to upload all the pictures of the subject property. And also you're going to have to upload all the pictures of all the comparables as well. Uh, to give the BPO assignment agent a clear understanding of the comparables as well as the subject property. Thereafter, the BPO agent is going to review everything that you've submitted and they're gonna report back to you if there's anything missing or in some cases, some inaccuracies on which comparables you've used. So you gotta take this very seriously. On the other end, the BPO uh, agencies, they have guys that are sitting at desktop doing desktop analysis. So they are gonna uncover their own comparables and make sure that they are driving with the job that you've done. So the last thing you wanna have happen is they kick out um, certain comparables that don't make sense because there is better comparables to utilize. Also, I believe in many cases this will hurt your rating as well and you'll probably get less BPO assignments. So you gotta take this very serious. And at the end of the day, this is your job as a real estate agent. You're valuing real estate, you're valuing real estate properties. And if you're gonna do a CMA for any uh, seller to get an idea of value, you would take your time just like this in terms of coming up with the right comparables to use to come up with good, fair market value for that property. Once the BPO is satisfactory, usually they pay out in 30 days, so the checks will start coming in. And um, again, we're, we have another video, link is below in terms of taking these BPO assignments. So you wanna check out that video so you can sign up with as many BPO companies as possible so you get a lot of these checks, a lot of these BPO assignments coming in. So how much does a BPO broker price opinion agent, real estate agent make? On average, in my experience, they would range around $60 per BPO. And if you signed up with enough uh, BPO companies, you could average uh, a handful a week or even a handful a day. It just depends on how active your current market is, as well as uh, how many BPO companies you actually sign up for and how well of a job that you do. Again, if you miss out on certain comparables and you kind of get blacklisted in certain companies or you don't do a good job, your ratings will fall and you'll get less BPO assignments. But I gotta tell you, when I was listing a lot of short sales when the market crashed, there was a handful of BPO agents that would do a lot of the BPOs for me when um, 
you know, they need to gain access for my listings to, to come up with valuation. And uh, one, one guy specifically, uh, that was his primary focus. I got to know him over time because uh, he did a lot of the BPOs for me. And um, later to find out, the guy was averaging about $6,000 every single month doing BPOs. So if you're interested in doing broker price opinions, check out the next video. I got the link below. I'll put the uh, video at the end of this as well. So you can click on it and um, you can find out how to make at least $100 a day doing broker price opinions. I'll see you there. Thanks a lot.